Hey everybody, welcome back. Talking about the truckers and the truckers being routed from the Ambassador Bridge which connects uh, Windsor and Detroit. A major bridge, a ma I think it's actually the biggest uh, opening between the United States and Canada. They got it clear. They, the police banded together and forced them out. That is the Canadian police managed to open that bridge back up. And it's significant, it's significant in a lot of ways. And we'll get going with that in a minute. Wanted to give a shout out to Kevin. Thank you for reaching out to the channel and trying to help out. I am on borrowed time on a borrowed system, if you will, because I had a fatal computer crash. It was two drives. I explained this a little bit the last time because I haven't been able to get videos up regular. I had a crash. The computer had two drives. Drive two is toast. It affected drive one, but I got the information off of drive one and um, I will have a tower here shortly thanks to some assistance from some of the viewers, Tags and Mark and now Kevin also reaching out and helping. And it means a lot because as I pointed out previously, um, in the real world, people don't typically come together and they don't really help out, which is also why this whole trucking thing is so very important right now. But when people do reach out and help you, it means a lot. It means a lot to me anyways. I really do appreciate it. But back to this, back to the whole bit with the truckers. They need to dig in harder than ever before, before they are routed out completely because it's getting to that point. Canada is under a lot of pressure from the people in their government that want total control without any oversight over the Canadian people because your rights are just getting trampled. They've been getting trampled for decades, but it's getting worse and worse, just like with Australia, with New Zealand, places where you thought it was free, the United States too, although it's not quite as bad here, not yet. Where you think you're free, we're in the West and democracy and liberty and sure, it's you don't have freedom and you don't have rights, you have a bunch of privileges and they're taking them away. They've been doing it for a long time, but it's getting worse as we move into the age of technology and very heavy-handed government. You need to dig in. You need to dig in like an Alabama tick. Who said that? Let's see who's paying attention. Where does that phrase come from? They will continue to route you out, and there's a lot of pressure from the United States. The United States is not helping, and I mean the government, not the people. The people in the United States, for the most part, are actually, seem to be anyway, behind this behind this and a lot of other countries have copycat movements going and I, I somebody had said and I kind of agree to a point and I hope I'm wrong that if they tried to do that in the United States in DC it wouldn't last 48 hours before people got bored and walked away <laughs> and it could be you need to do this now because you'll never get an opportunity to do it again You'll never get the opportunity to do it again. And it makes me think of an episode of The Twilight Zone. I'm going to touch on a few things here. I can't remember the name of the episode, but the word glove cleaner comes to mind. Anybody recognize it? Any fans of The Twilight Zone? Rod Serling was a freaking genius. And that show holds up. It still holds up even today. That's why every time they've tried to uh, bring The Twilight Zone back and recreate it, it's garbage because it can't compare to the original show. It still holds up, and the, the things that they teach on the show, the ethical and moral life lessons, they, they still mean a lot, even today. And this particular episode, this guy wanted this woman to love him. You know, I'll just wrap it up here um, with a simple explanation and try not to muddle it too much because I'm kind of paraphrasing the story. He wanted this woman to love him. He went to this professor. He sold him a bottle of love potion. It was like a dollar. Then he gets tired of her. He wants to get rid of her, and he sells a bottle of glove cleaner, but now it's a thousand bucks. So, you know, the price goes up, just like in life. You want something easy, it's easy, but you want to really accomplish something that's going to cost more. However, and this is the professor's warning, if you screw it up, if you don't do it, you'll never have the courage to do it again. And this is the reason why uh, truckers, if you're out there, if any of them are watching or any supporters of this, you need to dig in now because if they route you, if they can drive you all off without you accomplishing anything, 
most of you will never have the courage again. You'll just completely give up. It's human nature. It's human nature. If you feel like you've been beaten like that, most people do not keep getting up and they do not keep coming back. They have the support of looking around and seeing a lot of like-minded people, not just, again, the trucks, but for the most part, the Canadian people and people in various Western countries around the world, which are standing up and saying, we need to do this too. You have to keep the momentum going while you can. If you get broken up and accomplish nothing, you'll, you won't do it again, number one. Number two, they will make sure it doesn't happen again because they will regulate the life out of you. Truckers are already very heavily regulated federally and state-wise and county-wise, even in many places. Take advantage of truckers and trucking companies. Screw them over. Uh, screw them over with way stations and screw them over with tickets and all sorts of things like that. Anybody out there ever drive a tractor trailer? You know, chime in uh, and help me out here and explain just how much they screw you over with uh, regulations and tickets and fines and all kinds of stuff. Because these states and these counties know they can they can choke the life out of you with it and take that money and put it into their uh, their city, state, county coffers. They take advantage of these companies and they take advantage of these drivers, especially if you're an independent driver. It's hard. It's really hard. And I know this from experience because my wife used to be a tractor trailer driver. She drove for uh, Werner and I used to go with her. I used to go with her uh, and help her with her unloading because she didn't have no touch. If you're a truck driver, you know what I'm talking about. Rings very true, doesn't it? <laughs> Are you pissed off yet? The other reason is because not only will they regulate the crap out of all of you to see to it, this cannot happen again. And be on the alert for it, plan for it, put it, make it part of their city planning to prevent a buildup like this again, where people can just come in and convoy thousands of trucks and jam everything up. There will, after this is over, good, bad, or ugly, after this is over, watch and see if there isn't an acceleration of automated trucking. Because they're, they've been experimenting with it for a few years now. Watch them push to perfect it now. Watch them push to perfect automated trucking so that they won't ever have to deal with you ever again. <laughs> Think about it. Think about that. But I just wanted to uh, throw those thoughts out there. If you're part of this, don't give up. And they make it so hard, especially uh, with GoFundMe. GoFundMe robbing them, which is an entirely different topic of discussion, but took their money because they can decide to not let someone collect their funds, but they can also decide what's done with those funds and donate it to some charitable organization of their choice. God knows where that'll end up or what it'll be spent on. And that's a fraud. That is fraud. And when they were called on it, they said they would give the money back. Originally, this is what they were planning on doing. I haven't looked at the story for um, a few days now, but originally it was like, oh, you know, charity of our fund. And you don't know where it's going to go. BLM, abortion clinics. You think I'm exaggerating, but you don't know. You don't know. It could be something that to you is completely inappropriate that would piss you off. Hey, I, make, I gave money to this. Not what you're doing. What the hell? But they, they when they were called on that, because it was a lot of money, I, what was it, $10.2 million or something like that? Then uh, GoFundMe was like, oh, oh all right, uh, we'll, just, we'll just give the money back and just, you know, <laughs> it'll be okay. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. We're all friends here. My ass. Anyway, thoughts? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Again, I should be back on track here shortly thanks to the generosity of some of the viewers. And again, it really means a lot. It really means a lot because realistically, I mean, most of us are alone in whatever we're doing. So it's nice to know somebody cares enough to, to help. And there's no obligation either. I didn't sit there and say, you have to do this or I'm not going to, you know, I just put up a post that said, hey, I'm stuck for a little while. I can't put any videos out or at least not regularly. 
Um, please do give the video a thumbs up if you got anything out of it. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you knew all that good stuff. Probably the only way it will get seen because ScrewTube hates this channel. I get constant uh, messages from people. I got unsubscribed and subscribed again. My comments disappeared. My uh, I'm not getting alerts. So on and so forth. It's ridiculous. Uh, if you wanted to help the channel out, there are links for that down below. Every little bit helps and I sure do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and you're curious about the cat photos, they are pictures I take myself of strays that I help and it actually helps with the algorithm as far as loading the video. I went from 8-10 hours to load a video to less than 10 minutes putting cat pictures in. Makes you wonder what uh, YouTube thinks of its viewers. And well guys, if that's it, then what more can I say but stay tuned folks because there is more to come.